It's been more than nine days since a nearly 7,000 ton solar ferry sank off Korea's southwestern coast with more than 470 people on board. More bodies have been retrieved from the sunken vessel overnight and this morning, lowering the number of missing to 119, but raising the death toll to 183. However, also of a great concern here is an investigation on the authorities, and they are broadening the investigation into what exactly happened on the day the Seoul Ferry capsized and who exactly is responsible for this man made disaster. For more details on that and on the updates, we connect live with our UDN. She is standing by at the news center. Leah, now, how is the investigation coming along? Uh, are, are, are we getting any closer to figuring out what the cause of this tragedy is? Konyang, an advisory panel of 13 experts has been set up to answer that question, and they held their very first meeting about an hour ago at 3 p.m. local time. The panel includes professors, maritime specialists, and experts from the shipping industry. They will attempt to reconstruct the accident using a mock-up of the ferry. Prosecutors are also looking into another ferry called the Ohamanaho Ferry, also owned by the operator of the Seoro Ferry, to look for possible clues as to why the Seoro sank. The Ohamana Ferry is almost identical to the Seoro Ferry in size and follows the same route. After raiding the Ohamanaho Ferry, prosecutors have found out that most of its safety equipment, such as the life rifts and tubes, did not function properly. It's not a stretch to say, according to investigators, that the story would have been much the same for the Seoro Ferry. Now, Leona, can you tell us uh, what are the most likely causes for this accident? Right, Kanyang, a number of possible causes have been raised over the past several days, but three have emerged as the most probable scenarios. One is that the Seoro Ferry made a sudden right turn as it attempted to do a P turn. Another possibility that the three and a half thousand tons of freight on board was not secured properly, causing all the containers and vehicles in the cargo hold to list one side, tilting the ferry. And lastly, prosecutors are looking in to see whether the ferry was simply unstable due to the renovations made to the ferry to maximize the number of passengers and cargo. Hopefully the expert panel will narrow down those possibilities. That's right. Yeah, we are hoping that the experts of the panel of experts will uh, also um, really focus on all of those possibilities. And we actually had a, a foreign expert who said it's probably the chain of errors, all three of them linked together, that finally led to this tragic, tragic accident. But Liam, what about the crew members of this solo ferry? And most of them are facing criminal charges, I believe. That's right. Looking at the investigations unfold, it seems all 15 rescued crew members, including the captain, Lee jun Hawk, will face criminal charges. Eleven have already been charged with negligent homicide while violating maritime law, with the remaining four under investigation as suspects. Now, investigation continues into the ferry's operator as well, which is facing accusations that it has lobbied its way out of getting safety checkups for its vessel. Amid the crackdown, we are learning that the practical owner of the Seoro ferry operator Yu byung on was involved in embezzlement. We have just found out today that he and his family own at least three paper companies. Investigators say these companies were used for deals among the ferry operators, operators affiliates to set up the funds that the prosecution suspect were used for possible kickbacks and other irregularities. Also earlier, prosecutors ordered the second son and a daughter of Yu byung on to return to Korea by next Tuesday for questioning. I'll bring you more updates in our later newscasts.